Today on First Cup, we're going to talk about a new episode of Martial Arts Radio because it's a doozy and we're going to wonder what is that in my coffee? Stick around. Unless it kills me. What is that? I don't want to drink it yet. What is it? Is it coffee grounds? Three, two, one. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Today is Thursday, December 9th, 2021. My name is Jeremy. I'm nervous. This is my first cup of coffee. Doesn't taste like it's going to kill me. Well, if I fall over in the middle of the episode, then that's what happened. I hope you are well. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning to all of you. How was your Wednesday? What's shaping up for Thursday? Did you train? Did you do martial arts things? Did you think about martial arts? Did you fall asleep doing forms? Are these all things that happened to me yesterday? Maybe. Good morning, Daniel. Stacy says we'll call 911 for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh... I don't think they'll make it here in time. This is the challenge of living in the woods. It's it's been the like the one comment. Well, we're we're not going to go there. We don't have to. We don't have to talk about that. Uh, yesterday was a decent day. Uh, hit the wall around I don't know two. Took a break. Got an email from a client. They're like, "Yeah, I approve of this thing that you just did, and if you." do this next step. I can do my part tomorrow morning. And I'm looking at, and I'm like, that's really soon. Okay. I'll rearrange stuff. I don't always do that, but this has been a project we've been working on for a while and I know it's important to the client. So I do what I can. Um, remember yesterday I talked about the four, the four check boxes. Uh, good morning, Dennis. The four check boxes that I look for, you know, physical activity, productive work, uh, time with friends, and doing something I didn't need to do. I managed all four of those yesterday. It was a pretty good day. What did I not need to do? Well, middle of the day, I decided I'm going to swap out some wiring. Remember, I, I've upgraded the network and didn't like where the router was and so needed to put some longer cords on so I put longer cords on and now I've got to I've got to cut that wire and I've got to crimp a connector onto it and then I've got to tack one tack something up and we'll put it along the tr there. I got stuff I got to do or I shouldn't say got to do there's stuff I can do and I will be happy with the results Jenny says, I made a sugar-free apple crisp to get rid of the last of my apples from Thanksgiving pie making. It was delicious, but I had to share it with the toddler. Well, you didn't send me any, so I don't care. <laughs> I just That's not true, but the fact that you didn't send me any is, is true. Daniel says, I did a kind of martial arts thing. I spoke with my partner about coming to training with me, and she's going to give it a shot in the new year. December is crazy busy. That's awesome. Yay. She's never trained any martial art before. Well, my only, if, if I'm assuming and sharing that, you're, you're willing to hear some advice. My only advice, try to keep her martial arts training at the school. Don't try to teach her anything extra. Don't encourage her to do anything. When you, As soon as you guys, as far as her relationship to martial arts, I would draw a very hard line between her relationship to martial arts and your relationship to her. Because what, what I've seen happen is a significant other continues training even though they don't want to because they know it's important to their partner. And it strains every version of the relationship. So that's huge. I hope it works out. <laughs> I 
says, oh, I have a long way from being able to train anyone. She can go to class and learn. Okay. Good, good. What else did I do? I played with the dog. The gym dog likes me. I walk in, he comes running around the corner, somehow knows it's me, maybe by smell, and usually has a toy and gets really excited. And of course, he's he's usually walking through like a group exercise class to do this. This is a very laid back gym. I love this place. And uh, yeah, so pet the dog, worked out for a bit, came home, made a huge amount of food, ate it all, did not feel good about it. Other than that, it tasted good. Oh. Yeah, things are going well. They, they really are. The book stuff's going well. Um, for those of you that, that may have seen it and didn't realize what we were doing, we put up a post on Whistlekick social media yesterday with the hope that people would share it about 12 months to health because we've got two things that we're working on right now. We're trying to spread the word so people will buy and social media shares are the best thing we can do there. And then, of course, it's the review. So just a reminder, if you've purchased the book, even if you've just started it, please leave a review. Please don't wait a year to leave a review. We need to get to 25 reviews. Like, like we need to. Otherwise, this book will not do anything. It's selling a little bit, but we're nowhere close to breaking even on it. And that, that doesn't even include the time that everyone's put in on it. Just the, the raw financial expense on producing this book. We're nowhere near breaking even. So if you've purchased it, if you could leave a review, I would really appreciate it. Now, let's see, because I can do that fancy thing where I share screens instead of checking the episode on my phone, I'm going to check the episode over here. New episode of Martial Arts Radio. And if it's all, yeah. Pause. At the community. There we go. No, we don't need to play that ad. Oh, mute. All right. So we'll let the ad play through and then I will show you the graphic. This is something that we talked about for a while. We thought it was a lot of fun. And we needed to make sure that we did it the right way. So. Oh, that actually, that's not a bad. It's not a bad pause on the screen. So let me share that. Share, share screen, tab. And it was a lot of steps, isn't it? This is why a lot of shows, when they when they do this, they have like a producer running the board. How to fight Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon. And we brought back Sensei Seth. Uh, Sensei Seth was Andrew's idea, great idea. And if I remember correctly, the two of them spent some time talking about it. The more I've gotten to work with Sensei Seth, the more I like him. He is such a great guy, very kind. Uh, before and after our recording, we were just talking about a bunch of stuff. And if you're not paying attention to his content, I would encourage you to at least check it out because he's, he's a good guy. Philosophically, I think we're at least similar in how we look at the world at the martial arts world and he's entertaining and he's not afraid to stir the pot he's probably more willing to stir the pot than i am which is uh it says it says something it really is all right uh so go check out that episode of course it's available in video on youtube audio in your podcast feed you can go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com uh, so let me know what you think. These how to fight episodes, we're not doing them every month anymore. It's been a couple months since we did one. It'll probably be a few months since we do until we, since we do until we do another one, because they're a lot of work. Not only does Julius have all of his work, we've got the prep work, the recording work. I've got to sit down and, and manage the clips. Oh, take at this, you know, at 4503 in the recording inject footage from one hour 12 minutes 13 seconds in the movie plus i got to rewatch the movie 
So my total time in on one of these, not counting anyone else's, is like six to seven hours for a 30 to 45 minute episode. Plus, 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 plus everything. So it's it's a lot. So we're going to be diligent about who and how. That does not mean that if you have suggestions, we won't hear them. Always want your suggestions. Jeremy was looking at .com. Or you can just email Andrew. Andrew was looking at martialartsradio.com if you don't want to talk to me. Daniel says, I feel bad that I only ever listen to the audio now. If there's one format that we do that you're really missing out, if you only do the audio, it's this. It's the how to fights. Because the video clips aren't just, oh, let's randomly throw in a video clip. As we go through those episodes and we're talking about specific things that happen in the movie, we are bringing in those clips from those times. So you can see, oh, okay, that's what he's talking about. That's what she's talking about. That's what they mean there. Yeah, that's that's the whole point there of, of this format. We did these, and we'll see what happens with this one. We have been looking for a format that will help us break out on YouTube. It's, it's, not, it's not First Cup. Okay. When I look at the numbers of First Cup, you know, it gives us some consistent uh, numbers. But, and I love you guys, and we're not going to stop doing this show, but this show is not growing. It's not, I mean, it, it is, but just, it's not, you know, it's not hockey stick growth. It's not massive growth. There's no breakout happening here. And we'd like to do something that would bring us to the next level, make us a little more martial arts mainstream. Only if we can hold to our principles, though. No, oh, I can take your comment down. Daniel says, I, I will try and make sure I hit up YouTube for how to fight starting with this one. Thank you. I appreciate that. And let me know what you think. If if you found that to be valuable, tell me that. If you think, you know what, I got 98% of the value from the audio, then I want to hear that too. This is all relevant. doesn't mean that we change anything. I am not someone who doesn't want feedback. I want feedback. I want tons of feedback. If there was a way I could make you all fill out a survey at the end of every episode, I would do that. But we did that for Marshall Journal Print though. Yeah, I like feedback because that's how we make things better. Andrew says, just woke up. How to fight. Uh, it's really warm in here and I'm really warm and the hot coffee and the sweatshirt. And if I had a t-shirt on underneath, I would probably take this off, but I'm not doing the show topless because that's silly. It's not that kind of show. All right. Thursday stuff. What we got? I think Frank left me some things. Where are they? I swear I saw them. Did I not? Here they are. All right. So I do have stuff from Frank. None of you left anything yesterday, which makes me sad. So we dig into Frank's. It's okay. I won't take it personally. Okay. Yesterday would have been Ferdy Pachico's birthday. I don't know who that is. You might not. And I'm about to tell you. He was an American physician, corner man for Muhammad Ali, and boxing analyst for NBC and Showtime, born in Tampa, Florida. And so we got some quotes from him. Can you imagine being associated with somebody like Muhammad Ali? Being in the corner, telling one of, if not the best boxer of all time, what he should do. A lot of pressure. Oh, listen, a plow's going by. That happens like 75 times a day now because it snows 100% of the time. No, it doesn't, Jeremy. If it is below 35 degrees here, it is snowing. Always. Jeremy, that. You don't have to believe me. It's true. If you look, you can always see flakes.
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stuff happening. Good morning, Casper. Jenny says, I know that you were referencing the episode, but I can't help but wonder how many people watching or listening to this show wake up and their first thought is how to fight? Okay, so how, here's how you fight. Yeah. Instead of drunken kung fu, we can start a style called sleepy, sleepy what? Sleepy karate, sleepy taekwondo. It feels insulting. Sleepy karate. Yeah, instead of drunken kung fu, you got sleepy karate. Really. Okay. You're, you're welcome to take that and run with it. Daniel says, another content creator I follow, a full-time streamer, shared his YouTube earnings not so long ago when the Twitch leak happened. His YouTube growth was interesting. He did next to nothing for months and years, and then one thing hit. And it just exploded to 30 or 40K a month. Yes. And that is what happens. Uh, I have, I don't want to say I've given up because obviously we haven't. I am, as time moves on, I am less expectant that we will have things break out on various platforms. The older a platform it is, it, the older a platform is, the harder it is to become big on that platform. There are more and more entrenched people. People are more dialed into what they watch. Right? And that's why I'm spending the time that I'm spending on TikTok. I actually came up with a video concept yesterday. This one actually has been rolling around the back of my head for years. Uh, but now I think I've got a way of doing it that is simple enough that it won't cost me a fortune in time. Because the other version was going to be days. This one might be half a day. That's worth it. Because this, this one could be fun. I think people would like this. So you'll see. <laughs> Dennis says, popping that top off could give us a ratings boost. And <laughs> if you know Dennis, so he writes woo at the end. I don't know that I can do it justice. But if you remember Ric Flair from Pro Wrestling, WWF, that's how he says it. Woo! But he does it way better. Both of them do it way better. Andrew asks, is best of the best a Christmas movie? No. Uh, Casper's asking, did I see... I don't... Casper, I'm not sure what you mean, man. Uh... Sleepy Cat Kung Fu, Lazy Bear. Daniel says, check out Orange Cassidy. He does Sleepy Pro Wrestling. And apparently, Ric Flair still wrestles at 70 plus years old. You know, and, and he says it's sad. I don't, you know what? I've shared this before. I'll say this again. I believe we all have a thing that we are destined to, that we are meant to do. The thing that we can do that we can, in the way that we do it better than anybody else could. It is rare. You know it when you see it. Bill Wallace is a great example. What he does, nobody else could have done. He loves doing it. He's still amazing at doing it. And that's why he's still doing it at 76 years old. Why stop? Why would he stop? He loves what he does, and he's still able to do it. Ric Flair may be in the same boat. If he loves what he's doing, now, pro wrestling's a little rough on the body. Uh, I'm assuming he's doing things differently than he used to, but he's still a known quantity. If you can do what you love and make money at it, I don't think you should ever stop doing that. You take a look at people who retire. They stop doing the thing they love because everybody around them, oh, it's time to slow down. You know, how long do they last? They don't tend to live that long after that. We need purpose in our lives. Uh, 
Kelly said, "Sleepy Slap Fest." That would be. That would, that's probably what it would turn to turn into anyway. Stacy says, "Look for the TikTok. I see red videos. You could do the take the top off if you wanted. It's a thing, though not recommended." Andrew suggests past guest Cynthia Rothrock is another example of someone who is older, could probably retire, continues to do what she loves to do. You've probably heard people say, you know, 30 is a new 20, 40 is a new 30, whatever, whatever age shift you want to make. With our understanding of health and the body and our ability to reach people, yeah. There, there's, I'm 42. I am overall in the best shape of my life. And yes, that includes way back. That includes as a teenager. I, I, yeah. I have no plans on slowing down or stopping or, or if you know me, I don't, I don't act my age. I don't live my age. I'm still 25. I still have my entire life ahead of me. I'm going to keep going. All right. Uh, we got we got through the intro to, to, the, to these quotes. In essence, the whole thing of life is to just keep trying to do good things. Just do good things for people. It's pretty straightforward. We're part of a group, whether you think of that group as you're part of your family group or your friends group or your work group, society as a whole, martial arts, your martial arts school, whatever, whatever group you're in. Do good things for people. And you might wonder, well, is it really that meaningful? You know, sometimes people are really jerks. Some, uh, you can point to plenty of counter examples. And by the way, I, I have a rant brewing that will probably surface on social media in the next few weeks about people being cynical and focused on reasons to say no or be dismissive or find the, the issues with everything people say. You can always find those people. That's not what I'm talking about. What does it feel like when someone does something nice for you? Most of you probably take it to heart. You're probably appreciative. Even if you don't, say anything, even if you don't recognize it in the moment, even if it feels uncomfortable to say, wow, I really appreciate that. I mean, I try to do that, but I can't do that every time. Assume the best. Do good things for people. Kelly says, don't act your age. Good. Not gonna. Stacy says, one of your future guests is 75. Is he? Is he that old? Okay. And still making the world a better place. Andrew sums it up well. Growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. I look at it a little differently. When, when most people hear growing up, they assume that if you have not grown up, you are still a child. And there are plenty of legal adults who are still children. In fact, we, we could probably make arguments that most today are still children. But you always have the opportunity to choose how you conduct yourself. And there are consequences to that. Because of the way I act around people because of the lifestyle choices I make, et cetera, people don't treat me as my age. When I show up places, most people think I am significantly younger than I am, especially if I trim the beard up and there's less white in it. People generally think I'm about 30. And if I'm around martial artists who are 50, 60, 70 years old, they treat me like a kid. There are plenty of positive elements to that. They are more likely to share uh, uh, 
parental style advice. Like, hey, hey, kid, come here. Let me let me give you some advice. OK. Uh, expectations are often a lot lower when you think of someone as younger. And so those are those are assets. But at the same time, I am rarely treated as a peer in most circles, despite what I've done. Dis there was a, a, I was exchanging mess messages with someone yesterday and it wasn't about martial arts. It was about other things, but they managed to, they brought up a subject where, um, remember when I interviewed uh, James Wilkes, the guy behind the game changers documentary, uh, the, the, the meat is bad guy. Uh, we, we ended up in the conversation there it was uh, happening over social media. And I was like, yeah, I interviewed him. And the response was like, what, who, what, who are you? What have I've done some stuff. I've been around. Daniel says, I went to a kid's party a couple of years ago with my partner to drop off gifts. At one point, the parents left and Kate and I looked around and then at each other in horror as we realized we were the responsible adults in the room. Wow. It's a rough feeling. Jenny says, I can be mature and responsible without being serious. Most people don't realize that these things are mutually exclusive or they aren't necessarily, right? They don't have to. They can be independent. And I think that that's important to remember. Daniel says, I'm still 18. Well, you're aging terribly. Kind of fun. Life has to be fun. If it's not fun, what's the point? And I, I think, you know, it's it's funny. Stacy's referencing an upcoming guest where we're, we've we've hinted at a certain guest coming. Some of you know who this person is, and that's an aspect that I hope comes up during our conversation. This idea that um, enjoying life is such a, a critical aspect to living it. You gotta have fun. Doesn't mean you have fun 100% of the time. There isn't room for that, usually. But you can find fun in the things you do. You can choose to find joy in the work that you do, or you can choose to find misery. You can choose to find joy in school or misery. I choose to find joy because it's a choice and there's power in choice. All right, next, uh, let me skip two, let's go to three. All right. This is one that I, I think I think is important for us to consider as we watch the world, the sports world, the media world devolve into these clamors for fights, boxing, these exhibitions. What's the movie? What's the movie from the eighties? where they're hunting people. And then there was a second bird, the second one, pretty much the same plot. Ice T was in it. Was Stallone in the original? You guys are probably know the movie I'm talking about. We're not that far off from that. We are not that far off from some reality show that puts a whole bunch of money up as a carrot but there is risk of severe injury among participants and maybe even death. And we are going to watch it. All right, so here's the quote. There shouldn't be a death in the ring. There should never have been deaths in the ring because people, deaths in the ring occur because they don't keep up with the records well enough. 
They are putting mismatches together. The people who are licensed to stop a fight, the referee in the corner, don't do it for fear that the audience is going to object to them stopping a fight. We, as a society, have forgotten that the people in the ring are people. Because we don't, we don't have, we don't know who they are, right? They don't sit at our table. We don't care if they get hurt. If they die, it's tragic, but it doesn't change our lives. We just want to be entertained. I think that's the movie I'm thinking of. Jenny says, I'm thinking of Running Man. I think that's the one that I'm thinking of where the guy's got to get out. And if he gets out, he gets his freedom, right? It's like he's in prison or something. Andrew says, the only celebrity I've seen talk about doing a promotional boxing fight that I would like to see is Don the Dragon Wilson. And... It would depend on why he was fighting and who was fighting. It seems like every one of these celebrity fights is rooted in some kind of negative drama. I, I have no desire to participate in these. You know, Jake and Logan Paul, they've turned themselves into antagonists. People want to see them get knocked out. How about you just don't pay attention to them? You, you can you can change the channel. You can change the YouTube channel. You don't have to watch. I'm not going to pay money that I know is going to go back to people that I don't like in the hope that they get punched in the face. I got better things to do with my time and money than that. All right, Daniel says, surviving the game. Is the iced tea one. Okay. Yeah, it's like home. Uh, um, it's like a homeless person. That was an interesting movie. Yeah, so those are the two that I'm thinking of. Um, that's that's going to happen. I mean, we didn't get that far off when we had... Uh, what were those videos that circulated? Bum fights? Where they would have two homeless people fight for a sandwich? And lots of people watched it. This is where we're at. This is what we, we as a brand trying to instill positivity into the world are up against. We could, we could go negative. We could go cynical. We could go spiteful and watch our numbers go up dramatically. Instead of how to fight the way we did it, it could be, here's everything wrong with Bruce Lee's fighting style. And just tear them apart. We could do that. I'm not going to do that. I'll leave, I'll leave the negative to somebody else. We are a unifying force in the martial arts and hopefully to a certain degree of the world. Not divisive, not cynical. All right. Stepping off my soapbox now. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great day. I hope you go check out how to fight. I hope you give me feedback. I hope that whatever your day brings you, that you smile. And I hope to see you tomorrow. If you want to support us, remember you got some stuff that you can do. Watching, listening, of course, is the thing that I ask for the most, and I appreciate that you all do that. If you are watching on YouTube or Facebook or, or Twitter, you know wherever you see this, share it. Throw a thumbs up or a heart or whatever. Triggers the algorithm, more people see it, maybe we grow, right? Uh, you can also leave questions or comments or whatever for tomorrow's episode, for the Friday episode on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash first cup with Jeremy. If you don't use Facebook, you can email me, jeremy at And if you want to support us more directly, a little bit of money, Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick starts at two bucks a month. And then you know that guest that I'm talking about that like we're not naming? You would know who that is because we talk about that on them. 
or you can make a purchase at whistlekick.com, the ever improving whistlekick.com using the code firstcup15. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being the wonderful people that you are. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Peace.